Welcome aboard the Boat Buyer Secret Weapon Podcast, where we're dedicated to helping first-time and experienced boaters find the right boat at the best price and ensure all boaters have years and years of happy boating fun because life truly is better on a boat. Today's podcast is sponsored by the Best Boat Captain on the Water Training. It takes the stress, frustration, and swearing out of those dockings and other tough situations so you can have total control of your boat or pontoon. Visit bestboatcaptainonthewater.com for a short video and all the details. Now, let's hop aboard and have some fun. Captain Matt, Boater Secret Weapon, and today we're talking about propulsion systems. Which one is right for you? Which one is best? Um, and uh, we're going to go through inboards, outboards, inboard outboards or stern drives, and jet drives. We're going to skip over surface drives and electric uh, because I just don't think they're applicable to most people that are watching. So let's take a look at what's what. This is a jet drive. It's hooked up to a gas combustion engine and it shoots the water out. You can see there's no propeller. There's an impeller that's shooting the water through that nozzle and that nozzle will steer back and forth along with this rudder that is added to newer jet boats, um, probably 2011, 2012 or so. This here is a stern drive, an inboard outboard or an IO. You've got part of the gas combustion motor inside the boat. It transfers through the transom into the stern, to the stern drive, which has an exterior propeller. And that is a IO or a stern drive. The outboard, everything is on the outside of the boat. It hangs off the outside and uh, is a gas combustion engine. And then you have your inboard engines, which are different than inboard outboards. This, the engine is totally inside the boat. The only thing that comes through the boat is a shaft to a big brass propeller. And that propeller is stationary. And this rudder will turn, and that's how you steer the boat. So those are the four that we're going to talk about. You can look at them, and now you'll know, are you looking at a stern drive, a jet drive, an inboard, or an outboard? So what's what? What's best for you? Let's take a look at the outboards. The cons of the outboard, in my opinion, is it blocks the access to the back of the boat, to the stern. You don't have that swim platform on the back of the boat like you do with some of the other drives. It has less torque in a lot of situations, especially with the uh, four strokes, although they're getting better and better. The two strokes had lots of torque. They can be stolen easier. Because everything is on the back, they can, they can cut the cables, they can unmount it, and uh, there's even teams that have been found going around Florida stealing bigger outboards, 150s, 200s, uh, 350s, and the pros. They are the most popular propulsion system on boats sold in the U.S. Why? They're easier maintenance. They're simple, um, relatively speaking, to the stern drive. They're more efficient in most cases, especially the newer four-strokes. They're getting more and more efficient. They're quieter, especially the newer models. Very, very reliable these days. They've got them really dialed in, and um, they're super reliable. Cheap cost of ownership. You have oil changes. You have gear lube changes and peller changes. And for the most part, there's not a lot to do in the first three to five years of ownership. Uh, and then the maintenance is, is pretty standard. Um, they're easier to maintain in saltwater environments because the gravity is going to help drain that water out. They'll have easy flushes. They're easier to winterize and easier to run year round. Again, same thing. Gravity is going to get that water out. So you don't have the same chance of freezing that water expanding and cracking something. Although you still have to take care of them to put them up for the winter and make sure that you don't do something where water is going to get in an area that can cause problems. I've got videos on that if you are interested. Better power to weight ratio in most cases. More cockpit space because the whole engine is outside the boat. You don't have to worry about where are we going to put this big inboard portion of the engine. They typically make smaller wakes because they're typically lighter compared to the other engine. Shallower draft, which means you can get up and skinny your water. Shallower water, fish where you want to and you can totally trim them out of the water, which means if you're leaving your boat in the water for long periods of time, you can trim that baby all the way out. You don't have to worry about growth. You don't have to worry about the corrosion. Uh, you don't have to worry about as much maintenance. So in my opinion, great options if you're a saltwater boater. I really lean towards the outboards in most situations. Fishing boats, they're great, because if you get that fishing line up under the motor, you can tilt it all the way out, 
and you don't have to lose the fish. And they're also great on pontoons uh, because they're just a, a great platform. You don't have to worry about trying to tuck an inboard engine inside that aluminum can. Now let's look at the stern drives, the inboard outboards, the IOs. They're more expensive as a cost to maintain them. You've got to take care of the bellows and you've got to worry about that transfer and you've got um, just more moving parts on a stern drive than you do on an outboard because you have to transfer the power from inside the boat to outside of the boat and that makes it more complicated. You cannot trim them out of the water. If you leave your boat in the water for an extended period of time, you have to be very aware of corrosion uh, and causing issues there. They're tougher and more expensive to maintain in salt water for a number of reasons. We talked about gravity being a benefit with the outboards. This is going to suck the water up and into the motor and it's much tougher to get that salt out of the motor, although not impossible. Pros, easy access to the water. Because that stern drive is under the water line, you can put a swim platform and everybody can hang out on the back of the boat. One of my favorite things to do allows for that full beam swim platform and a sun pad. You still have the motor, which you have to account for. It takes up some space, but you can have a nice sun pad. You can have a nice back third of the boat that's going to be really great access to the water and hanging out. More torque in most situations because you've got that big, heavy engine uh, that's going to get you going quickly. Um, and and the motor is tucked away in most situations where that propeller and the drive is tucked up under the swim platform, especially in the last 10, 15, 20 years even, where the swim platforms have gotten bigger and bigger. In my opinion, the aesthetics are better than having that big outboard hanging on the back. It's what I grew up with. It's what I'm used to. As a lake boater, that's what you saw most of the time, and I just think it looks sharper. Better handling in very rough water. Because you've got that deeper draft, that motor is all the way down in the water. If you're running in really, really rough chop, you're not going to worry about losing grip on the water, that propeller coming out. Uh, you have to be really getting after it to have that happen. In my opinion, great options for freshwater, lake boaters, bow riders, deck boats. Uh, they're, they're perfect for that environment. I'm not a fan in saltwater. If you're at boat shopping, grab the Boat Buyers Toolkit. It's free. You can get it at BoatBuyersToolkit.com. Now, the jet drives. A lot of people have bad opinions of, of jet boats. I think they're great for a number of people, uh, but not everybody. The cons, they run at higher RPM. Because you don't have a big prop hanging outside the boat to turn you through the water, you've got to run that engine a lot higher RPM to get the speed and the performance. Because of that, you have a higher pitched noise level. Not necessarily louder, it's just a different sound because that engine is running at a much higher RPM, you have more of a higher pitch, kind of a whiny sound. Um, they've gotten better over the last uh, 10 years or so with sound dampening and, and uh, reducing it, not eliminating it, but reducing it. Because of the high RPMs, you got more vibration. You have the opportunity to suck up some seaweed, uh, and, and they do things to prevent it or, or uh, allow it easy clean out. They're not great at slow water maneuvering because you've got to have some momentum to shoot that water out to get your, your control. Uh, and maneuvering in reverse, they're a little bit different. And um, again, in the last five, 10 years, they've gotten better at both of those by adding in the rudder, by adjusting how they do the buckets. Um, Rotax and Yamaha do it both differently, um, but they're cons in my opinion. The pros, excellent access to the water. Because the jet drive engines are shorter and they're more compact because they're for the jet skis, they really allow you to get more room inside the same size boat and do a really cool uh, full beam swim platform. They're usually two tier because of the size of the, and the profile of those engines and that gives you a lot of great access if you're a sandbar person, if you're hanging out at the lake and you hang out on the back end. More interior cockpit space, better aesthetics overall. I think the jet boats are really, really sharp looking no matter what the brand is. Very shallow draft because you don't have that big stern drive sticking below the water line or the out drive, the foot of the lower unit on an outboard you can get in shallower water, but be careful. You don't want to go into shallow water where you're sucking up rocks and sand and debris. It can cause issues. Pros, quick acceleration and turning ability. They really feel like a sports car when you're driving them. If you like the performance, you like getting after it, uh, jet boats can be a great option. There's no propeller, so there's a safety factor because you don't have that big propeller hanging off the back. 
with a little bit of education and uh, proper usage, that shouldn't be an issue. But if you're concerned about it, it does uh, give you a, a little bit safer boat. Easy maintenance in saltwater. They have an easy flush because of the way the jet drives work. You're just going to blow that water right out of it, and uh, and it's pretty simple. For me, a jet boat is great for somebody that loves the sandbar, families, and you're a speed lover, you're a performance lover, uh, but they do ride a little bit rougher. I should have put that in there because you don't have the ability to adjust the trim on the motor in most cases, adjust the angle of the bow um, as you're hitting the waves. It does give you a little bit rougher ride. Inboards. So again, the inboards, the whole motor is inside the boat, but you've got a shaft and a propeller, whether it's a V drive that comes forward and goes back, or if it's a, just a straight drive, it's going to have the same pros and cons. They're more expensive cost of ownership. Um, th that's not necessarily true. I probably should have taken that out of there. Um, they are expensive if you ding up your prop because you've got a big expensive prop back there. No ability to adjust the trim, so they're rough riding. That is a stationary shaft and propeller. There's no way to adjust it, so you're going to hit the waves hard, uh, and you can't lighten it up. They handle differently, especially at slow speeds in reverse. Again, you're sending water past that that uh, rudder to steer and for performance. So the slower you're going, the less responsive your steering is. In reverse, you're pushing the water forward. So the only water going by the rudder is made by the speed of the boat. You don't want to be going real fast in reverse. So you don't have a ton of control and you're going to be usually pushed off to the side because of the spin of the propeller. Something you got to get used to when you're driving uh, inboard boats. The pros excellent torque. They've got a big old brass propeller on there. It's going to get your water sports, your surfer, your wakeboard, or your skier out of the water quickly. They excel at water sports. If you're going to do water sports 90% of the time, the inboard could be the boat for you. Clear transom for tow ropes. You've got your propeller is up under the boat, safer. You don't have to worry about tow ropes. Your swim platform is going to be right at water level. And that propeller, like we said, is under the boat. In my opinion, if you're serious, serious, serious about water sports, the inboard wake type boat could be the right option for you. Again, we talked about the Boat Buyers Toolkit. You can grab that for free at BoatBuyersToolkit.com. Let's pull up the anchor and run this podcast back to the dock. We'll be back again with another helpful and fun episode next time. If you'd like to be a guest on the podcast, visit BoatBuyersSecretWeapon.com slash guest and I'll help offer insights into your boat research and shopping experience. Also, we'd appreciate it if you took just two minutes to rate and review this podcast on Apple, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcast. It helps other find us so we can help more boaters. By the way, if you want to ensure you find the perfect boat at the lowest possible price so you can buy with 100% confidence, visit BoatBuyersSecretWeapon.com slash Academy for a short video and all the details. Now, before we go, I want to leave you with a few first-time boating tips for when you own your new boat. Number one, know your local boating laws, basic navigation rules, and how to operate your boat safely. It'll make boating even more fun for everyone. Two, be aware of your wake at all times and pay attention to no wake zones because you are responsible for your wake. When maneuvering at slow speeds, you can put out an enormous wake. If going slow, be courteous, save some fuel, and drop down to idle speed, just in forward gear to ensure there is no wake. This could save you an expensive ticket and will keep you from being that guy on your waterway. Number three. Boats do not have headlights. They have docking lights, specifically made for seeing in tight quarters and docking. Do not turn your docking lights on while cruising down the water. It can blind other boaters and is very dangerous and, again, could save you an expensive ticket. Number four, follow the maintenance schedule for your boat. Change the oil, impeller, gear loop, winterize if you need to winterize in your area. Inspect your trailer tires, bearings, and grease the hubs if you're a trailer boater to ensure you don't experience expensive and unnecessary repairs that will impact your boating time. Number five, always double check your plug is in, your battery is charged, and the fuel is full before heading out for a day on the water. It could just save your boating day. And if you're a trailer boater, I've got a few extra tips. Number one, at the boat ramp, prepare your boat 
your gear and your guests in the staging area. Then when you're ready, back down the ramp, unload the boat, head to the parking lot and right back down to your boat to be fast and courteous to your fellow boaters and don't tie up that ramp unnecessarily. Next, use transom tie down straps when trailing your boat. Very bad things can happen if you don't and they do happen. Three, Check everything in the boat is secure before heading down the road. Seat cushions, gear, keys, towels, even tubes and lily pads can get blown out when pulling your boat down the highway or interstate. And most important, have fun. Enjoy your boat and get on the water as much as possible because life truly is better on a boat. Until next time, this is your friend in boating, Captain Matt.